Hey, what's up? Zach King from FinalCutKing.com, and I'm going to be going over Motion 5, the software that just came out for $50 in the U.S. Now, I'm going to be focusing this tutorial for beginners. If you've already had experience with the past versions of Motion, you might want to watch just to take a look at the new layout and understand where everything is, but you can probably figure it out on your own. But for those of you who are really beginning and this is your first time in Motion 5, this is going to be a great tutorial for you. A lot of you might have opened it and felt really scared and intimidated, but let's get started. I want you to feel comfortable by the time we finish this video. So I'm going to change my settings to HD 1080. We've got a time code at 10. You can also do it to frames or seconds. I'm just going to keep it like that and hit open. So you're presented in Motion 5 here. With the basic layout, we've got the canvas up here. This is where you're going to be creating your final project, your graphics. you got your timeline down here. Your layers are going to be up here, just like in Photoshop. And then you've got three tabs over here to import, to find different filters and effects, and then adjust those in the inspector. So let's do something. Let's just get started. It's kind of my style. I'm going to grab a photo here in the file browser. Again, this is where you can import media such as video, photos, anything from your computer. You can also just drop and drag from your finder. So I've got a photo of my beautiful dog. It's a boxer best dogs in the world. At least I think so. So what I want to do to this, um, let's go ahead into the library. Start playing around. And we've got behaviors and filters up at the top. I'm going to be posting a lot more tutorials that get more advanced and talk about a lot of the other features here. But for now I'm just going to focus on behaviors and filters today. And I'm going to go to bad film. I'm going to grab this and put it on the photo. Kind of gives it a black and white desaturated. And if we play it here in the timeline, you can also see it down here, there's a filter icon and its own layer attached to the photo. Now up here is this dialog box and it's all our settings we can change. And this is called the HUD, the heads up display. And you can access it right here, clicking right down here. Turn it on and it says bad film, here's like focus amount, blah blah blah. So many different features you can change. You can also adjust these in the inspector. And this will usually have more options. My voice is a little raspy today. So now let's add some text. First I'm going to bring my focus back down. I'm going to go ahead and hit shift while I hold down the edge of the photo so it stays in proportion. If I don't it just gets screwed up like that. And I'm going to center it like so. All these grids should be default on for you. I'm going to go ahead and add some text. Now this area if you're familiar with motion in the past versions all of this used to be up here and same with this information as well it used to be in the top but I'm gonna go ahead and add some text uh, hit escape to get out of the text editor and you're back into your arrow if you also need to get back you can select this to transform tool and I'll bring you back um, just like in Word in the heads-up display I can switch this to center drag this over, center it up right there. I can also edit individual things if I highlight. So if I want just the bottom to be edited, maybe I want to make this all caps. Well, instead of retyping it, go to the inspector, go do all caps under advanced formatting. Sweet. And that looks good. Actually, I want to select this again, and we're going to move the tracking just so it's pushed together a little bit more. Like that. Might be a little much, too much. you get the idea. I also want to change the color of this Zach King. Let's make my name go to here and grab part of the green. Sweet. I'm also going to raise that up a little bit. Cool. Escape. Sweet. So now let's maybe do some animation. Actually, I know what we can do. Let's add a behavior. We need to talk about that. So behaviors are a great way to have pre-keyframed filters applied. So I'm going to go to text sequences and there's six more folders under here. Now I'm going to go to basic and you can preview everything up here as well as the filters. I didn't say that earlier. But you can preview and I'm going to go into like a blur in. There we go. So we previewed it. You can even pause it. That's cool. You can either hit apply up here or you can drop and drag like so. You'll see it's right here. It is about 
how many frames long is that? So it's 41 frames. I'm going to move it out to 26. If I want it even shorter, I can, of course, hit O. I and O work in here, so O trims it. And it'll just be quicker. There we go. So we've got the filter, we've got the text animation. I know, how about we add some uh, a border along this photo really quick. So we go to filters. I'm going to go to border and simple border, drag this on. You can't see it because it's black, the background's black. So let's click this colorful icon and go to transparent. That'll be, uh, obviously we can't see the white as much anymore, but we can at least see our border. Let's edit it. Let's go ahead in the inspector. Select our border. And actually we just do it all in the hood. Change our color. There's not much to adjust here. So let's just make it white. You don't have to have this transparency on, but it's nice if you want to. If you don't, if you want it to be a solid when you export, actually, right click on your canvas, project properties, command J is also the key. And we're actually gonna hit background color or background solid. So that'll export as you see it now, black in the background. So let's do something cool now. Let's do some camera work. We can add a camera here. It's gonna ask if I want to switch to 3D or keep as 2D. Well, if you want to move in 3D space, go ahead and switch to 3D, like I do. Look at the heads-up display now. You've got these different icons. We've got, these are all 3D icons. This one's going to move us forward in Z space or backwards. This one's going to move us up, down, right, or left. And this one's going to do a combination of both, which I, I don't use that one much at all. And then we've got the rotate. So undo. You can also access these up here. And if you hold down shift for all these, by the way, it goes twice as fast, or I don't know how much faster, but it moves a lot faster. So let's go ahead and center ourselves up. I hit shift Z right there to get us centered. And by the way, that's a tip. You want to do that right in the beginning. Obviously, see how small my project really is now. But okay, I'm going to zoom it in to fix that. We're going to line it up. Now, make sure your playhead's at the beginning of the timeline, if you're even following along, or maybe you're asleep by now. Add a keyframe right here with this red circle with the keyframe button. It says record. Now you can either hit the space bar and see where you want to time it out. I'll probably time it out 30 frames in, which is a second in this project. So I'm going to pull it back. Actually, I'll, why don't we just go in? So I'll zoom it in. And let's just do a kind of a, a twist. Okay? So now it's already recorded. You could turn it off or just leave it, but if you make a change now, it'll adjust. So there's the animation. So it's not the sexiest animation, I'll admit, but it is a picture of my dog, and that makes up for it. Um, let's add light. Here's the light button right next to the camera. You're going to see everything else gets dark, and then we've got our light we can adjust. And I just keyframed it. See how I left my keyframe mom? So I'm going to undo that. I just said keyframe mom. Okay. Where'd my light go? Select it here. If you ever lose it, grab it. You can also grab it in the layers. I didn't really talk about layers, but you know, if you deselect something or want to just grab my text, select it. So the light, we've got some adjustments. We can do intensity. We should throw that up. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that for now, but I'm going to show you that maybe I don't want to actually light my text. I just want to light the photo, and I want the text not to be so dark. Well, you could select the text go into your inspector and then under properties you've got this area where you can go to lighting I guess you have to hit show and then inherited is on but you want to turn it off so it'll go back to regular you'll just be lighting the photo so you can change the color of the light for example and we could do green it okay that's disgusting for the sake of the tutorial let's just change the light a little bit greenish. It's there. And I'm not affecting any of my text. Super cool. And you can animate this light as well. I'm going to be making a really helpful, I think it's helpful, and detailed video training, like probably two or three hours of videos. And you guys can buy it. It supports me in film school. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I'm working on it and it's almost done. Look for it in the next week and a half. And Subscribe to this channel because I will be giving also a lot of free tutorials. I know some of you are students like me and can't afford all the video training. And if you really do want to get it too and you're a student, email me and just say, hey, I'm a student.
and I'll give you a, a good discount, okay? And feel free to comment if you have any questions, anything. So subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care.